All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining the Apple thinning session. My name is Chris Strom. I work for WSU Extension. Uh, so the topic of this webinar is apple fruit thinning, and I'm pleased to introduce our speaker, uh, Poliana Francescato. Uh, Poliana works for Valent uh, Biosciences as a global technical development specialist, and she has responsibilities for market and technical development of PGRs and fruit crops. Um, she spent time before Valent working at Cornell University on plant growth regulators, applied tree fruit physiology, and crop load management of home and stone fruit. Um, so if you're ready to go, Pollyanna, take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank, uh, to thank Tiana, Chris, and all the organizers for, for the invitation to speak today. For me, it was always an honor to be here. So I'm gonna start right away because I have only 30 minutes to talk, only 157 slides to cover. I'm kidding. So I, however, thin is always a talk that could be discussed for days, for months, for even years. And uh, we know that thinning is, especially chemical thinning is a very hard task. From my own experience, I would say is one of the most uh, difficult management strategies since that's what is gonna uh, define our crop. It's always a hot topic and I just feel like the more I learn, the more questions I have. So my goal here is today is not uh, to change the way you guys are doing thinning, but it's more like a talk to um, revisit some concepts, uh, refresh your, your knowledge and maybe bring some new information get that could be used or maybe can help explain you guys some of the odd things you get when thinning. You guys are who are out there, you are the real experts. It's very easy for me to come here, up here and talk about thinning. But believe me, I know how hard it is. I know how stressful it is when you are actually doing it. Uh, I spent four years at Cornell, as Chris just said. And when I was at Cornell, I wasn't just doing PGR research. I had about 10 acres of apples to manage. Most of those uh, orchards were rootstock trials that Terence had. So I had to manage them just as you do with your own orchard. So I'm very familiar with the, with the term spray and pray. Actually, I, I would prefer pray, spray, and keep praying. That's how I use it. So I really hope that at the end of my talk, you'll have at least uh, one take home message. I'm going to start off. Um, talk a bit about flower initiation and differentiation. I already gave this talk, uh, it was a full talk last year at the Hort annual meeting. So uh, I'll just touch briefly upon this. So as, as everybody knows here, apple trees produce flowers and fruits on spore buds or on one year old shoot. And then on the own uh, one year old shoot, we call bur shoot, we have apples and uh, flowers. Oops, got to use this mouse. So we have apples and flowers on the terminal bud, but also on the axillary buds. And then we also know that the fruit that we're going to ha be harvesting this year is uh, was formed during the, the year before. So. Now let's just focus on the development of flowers of these spore buds here, which is called the burr shoots, which I'm showing here. Uh, I'm showing you here. So there are kind of four uh, ontogenetic process during the flower development, and I have listed them here. So these are the common timing of flower development on spore buds, which are this type of bud. So we have the flower induction, initiation, differentiation, and the antithesis, which is the bloom. The induction is the transition from vegetative to flower. We cannot see. We don't. It's something inside of the tree that's telling to the bud you're going to be vegetative or going to be a flower bud. It's not visible. The flower initiation actually is the first visible change. So if I get a bud from that particular variety and I bring it to, to, to the uh, to, the, the, to the lab and look under the dissecting microscope, I can see that pronounced doming of the Mary stem, just like this show in this picture. After the flower initiation, then of course, we have those 
all those morphological chains. We have the formation of the king flower, the lateral flower, the sepals, the petals, the stem. And then during the antithesis, we have the formation of the pollen ovule and, uh, and uh, the pollen and the ovule that take place from something like around green tips. So let's just focus on the flower initiation and uh, on the spore buds for now. So during two years while I was at Cornell University, I started collecting spore buds from different varieties in order to time flower initiation. Remember flower initiation is just when you see that dome in there. It's not so visual uh, if you just open the bud by itself without the dissecting microscope. So I had worked in the past with Fuji and Gala during my PhD. So I knew that they form flowers at different times. So in here we have uh, timing, the days after full bloom, and then you have months. It might be a little bit off if you compare with Washington as the season starts a little earlier here. This month were correspondent to New York. Then here I have listed the varieties according to the flower initiation timing, which is the time, of course, when I could see that uh, uh, visually tell if it's a vegetative, if it's a flower. And most of the time when I had about 70% of the buds already with that stage there. So my conclusion from this, you can see here, I look at honey crisp, mini uh, golden delicious, Fuji, Gala, and, and so on. So my conclusion from this was that varieties widely differing time of flower initiation, therefore flower induction will also vary. But then I also note that uh, variety uh, varieties that are prone to be biennial berry, such as honey, crisp, macaw, Fuji, goldens, they, these varieties, they initiate flower much earlier than the annual cropping varieties. For instance, Gala up here. So if you look at here, for instance, honey crisp, it's around uh, when the time we can see that, that uh, uh, doming on the spore buds is around 45 to 60 days after full bloom, while gala is much later, about 80 to 95 days after, uh, after full, uh, full bloom. So that explains why it's so important to think these varieties as early as we can. And what do I mean by early? So this is just, uh, 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 I want to show a uh, uh, study that I did in New York in 2018, the effect of hand thinning time on return bloom of honey crisp. Very briefly here, let's take a look at the treatment. So we had four treatments here, my untreated control, the trees were not, uh, we didn't do any chemical thinning, any of those treatments. So my untreated control didn't receive, they didn't receive any hand thinning, so they were unthinned trees. And then they have my king flower treatment, which means that when at balloon stage, we went there and thinned every single cluster to, uh, to a single flower. And we left only the king flower. And then when the fruit reached about 10, 12 millimeters fruit size, we went there and adjust the crop load to about 120, 130 fruit per tree. According to Terence's calculation, those trees could handle about 100 apples 110 apples uh, per tree. So we decided to go a little bit over just to see how far we could go on crop load. And then my other treatment, which had another purpose actually, we thinned everything at bloom, at, at the balloon stage at one flower per cluster. And we left only the smallest lateral flower there. And then again, we went back at 10, 12 millimeters and we adjust the crop to, 120, 130 fruit per tree. Of course, we end up a little bit more than that. And then my last treatment was when we only thinned at the 10, 12 millimeters stage. We didn't do any, any blossom thinning here. We just went there. We thinned every single cluster, one fruit left, and then we adjust the crop load. So when you look at the return bloom on the, on the 2019, the second year, this is very simple example and very simple study, but it shows clearly the importance of early thinning. So of course we had zero flowers on my untreated control because they were really over cropped. But I look at my blossom thinning treatments here. We had about 40% of return bloom. It was considerably good because when we counted the amount of fruit number per tree in the following year, we end up with about two 
50 fruit uh, of uh, app, 250 apples per tree. But when I had my late, when we, we went later with my uh, 10, 12 uh, millimeters uh, thinning, we will end up only with the six uh, percent of return. Of course, if you maybe if you had left a hundred fruit per tree, this could be maybe thirty percent and eighty percent. So we do we can overcrop a little bit more if you do early thinning. But when you start going later, we can't do um, we cannot uh, do too much thinning in this case. So before we go. Um, my point is here, before I move to other one, my point is here is early thinning, it's really important uh, for, for, for returning bloom. So if we talk a little bit about the strategies to increase return bloom, as I said, early thinning is still the most important, uh, the best way to help avoid alternate berry. It's the cheapest way, it's the easiest way. Well, easiest way, we know thinning is really hard, but it's still the best way to try to get those flowers coming back every year. You may ask me now about, how about the NAA at the phone, the PGR uh, spray program that we've been using to enhance flower formation. So I have done tons of studies uh, when I the phone in the past before knowing honey crisp and before even knowing food as well. And I never, my, my data, our data was never, um, it was never very, uh, let me close this pool, <laughs> it was never ever consistent. So with what we, uh, we realized after knowing that honey crisp and Fuji, they differentiate flowers, maybe we were applying the pictures too late, but uh, I do believe they work because a lot of my last talk, people said, so you think it doesn't work? They would work. But when you have, when you have overcrop trees, those PGRs are not gonna work. So you have to reduce that crop, uh, that crop load as early as you can. And I'm talking most about these poor buds, which are those, uh, that picture I showed you before, those are the, the fruit that we want. We will have flower development later in the season, and I'm gonna touch base on that very soon. But if you wanna focus on those poor buds, we really wanna target this point. So let's start our thinning with the NAA. I know some are doing already the mix of NAA at the phone as a thinner at early stage. So some of your jar sprays again will not work on heavy loaded trees or if you have thinned it too late for those particular uh, buds. I put up this slide here just to show. I have here a picture on the on the on the left corner uh, of a one year old wood uh, shoot. So one year, one year old shoot. So those flower buds that are in the terminal here and the axillary buds, actually, if you compare with the, uh, with the spore buds, they do differentiate flowers a little bit later than, than the spore buds. I looked on Gala, I didn't look on honey, Chris, but the timing, the difference between spore and that type of uh, fruiting unit is about 10, 15 days later. But then a lot of people are doing hedging for other purpose or summer pruning and you have a regrowth. So again, a lot of people ask me about those, can you have a flower bud there? Yes, we can. Flower induction apple is not controlled by temperature and day length. So flowers can develop, uh, buds can develop later in the season or any time. So with these poor buds, those is very particular case because they do differentiate much earlier. But when you have those little regrowth here that are induced by summer pruning, if they're not too long, too strong, they will form a flower bud at the top, at the, at the tip. But if the trees are overcropped, and uh, uh, for instance, if you did the hedge and you had this regrowth and the trees are really overcropped, the chance to set a terminal flower bud will be minimal. I have these photos are from New York, from our, our station, uh, Cornell University. And you see here those regrowth, the, the hedging was done about uh, in mid of July, if I'm not wrong. And then we had those little regrowth. And then I went back there in January and I started collecting those buds and I brought it to the lab and look under, dissect, under the dissecting microscope. And I could see that flower initiates that doming appearance. So we do have those flower, uh, but it's late in the season. 
However, if you ask me, how about the quality of those late uh, flower, uh, those late uh, those flowers that are formed later? I have never looked into that, so I would not know. So this is just a brief introduction about. Uh, uh, about the flower development. Now let's talk about a fruit thinning. So everybody's very familiar with the benefits of, uh, of fruit thinning. It's beyond only fruit size and fruit color. Here we have these examples. It helps on return bloom. It increases uh, harvest efficiency, but also reduce packing storage costs because you're gonna be harvesting more uniform uh, fruit. We have better color, of course. You're, you, you, you don't wanna have this uh, case here. You don't wanna have any uh, branch or tree breakage. You wanna avoid overcrop trees to avoid this kind of situation. Also, if you have a more uniform trees, uh, you are gonna improve your manage, management practice as pruning and fertilization. So here, so let's understand a little bit about, uh, before we go into the chemical thinning, let's understand a little bit about the physiology behind natural thinning. This is also help us to understand how each chemical thinner works. So from bloom to petal fall, and I would say anytime from bud break all the way to petal fall, all the carbohydrate trees are using to produce energy to, for pre-bloom growth and the respiration, they come from reserves. So all the carbohydrate that well, the tree had stored in the previous season. So all that carbohydrate is gonna help for the growth up to, to petal fall. So by petal fall, the trees, has used, uh, the trees have used all the stored carbohydrate. Let me close the box here. And uh, so the, uh, the fruit growth, and of course, the shoot growth as well, will depend upon the carbohydrate that's produced by photosynthesis in these poor leaves. And here I have an example of these poor leaves and the bush uh, leaves here. So this, uh, so the growth that is dependent from the carbohydrate by these poor leaves until those poor shoot leaves can contribute so when they are full expanded and they are mature, when that happens probably around 15 millimeters fruit size or when the, the, the shoots reach about 10 millimeters inches. So before that, so before the 15 millimeters or the 10 inch uh, length of the shoots, fruit and shoots are growing very rapidly and they are competing for the carbohydrates. But the shoots are very strong sinks. So, tree will allocate carbohydrate first to the shoot and then go to the fruit. So if the fruit doesn't receive enough carbohydrate, if demand exceeds uh, supply, it will stop growing and begin to size. So it's very simple. It's all about the carbohydrate balance. So of course, as tree matures, more leaves become fully developed and enough uh, carbohydrates are produced by those leaves to support the fruit shooting growth. Uh, at this stage, of course, then fro uh, fruit drop is less likely to occur. So this is really important. This is why most of the understand, it's very, uh, this is really important for, to understand how the thinners work. That's why most of the thinner work best during this period here, after petal fall or before the 15 millimeters fruit size. So anything that you can apply that can alter the carbohydrate balance or cause, uh, or cause uh, any sort of stress to the tree at this stage will cause, uh, will cause thinnings. For instance, let's, look, uh, let's take a look at this uh, study that was done by Phil Scholler in Michigan to measure time sensitivity to chemical thinning. So this is study we're conducting on a mature uh, gala block where he applied chemical thinners was either NAA plus carberry or 6BA plus carberry from bloom all the way to 20 millimeters fruit size. He did this work for eight years. Terence did the same work. So we can see clear here, if you look at the percentage of thinning he got at different time, you can see clear here that fruit legs are most sensitive to thinners at the A12 millimeter stage, of course. 
the thinning response is driven by the weather at the time of thinning. So we may have more or less thinning, depending on the temperature. So, but this is just to show the typical percent of thinning expected. If of course the thinning is performed um, with uh, um, moderate thinning rates or under favorable weather conditions, because if you have a high rate or it's hot, you may get a 80% of blue, uh, thinning at petal fall. I already got it with Maxell and Carberry when temperatures were around 85 Fahrenheit. And we applied, we had two days about 85, we over thin those trees at petal fall. So it's all depend on the temperature. On the temperature. So how about thinners? What do we have, uh, look at the timing here. What do we have available and what is coming to the US? When I was listing here, uh, the thinners available in the US, I realized how lucky and uh, spoiled we are with the number of uh, active ingredients, the number of AI we have. Not, I've been working with a lot of countries and uh, a lot of them don't have even half what we have. A lot of, most of them don't have any carbure any longer. So we have a lot of AIs and then we have some still that they're about to get registered. We can classify them as the, the, the cost products. And then we have the PGRs and the PGRs like compounds. And then of course we have the combinations. I have listed them all here by AI. And also I have the timing when they can be applied. And with this time, what stage um, they show better efficacy. However, as most of them are driven by temperature, so this can, this can change as well. But if you apply alone under fair, favorable temperatures, I would say more than 65 Fahrenheit, but less than 75, we could classify the NAD and carburyl as, as weak thinners. <coughs> And also actually ABA is also considered a weak thinner. We have 6BA as a mild thinner and NAA Pephon like to mild to aggressive. I'm not talking about the cost products because everybody's very familiar uh, about that. So NAA for instance can be applied anytime between bloom to all the way to, uh, I think it's 20 millimeter, 20 days, 30 days after full bloom is most effective here during the eight to 12 millimeters. As most of the PGRs you can see here, we have NAD, which is the amide as salt of NAA. It's a mild thinner, a weak thinner actually. It can be applied between bloom and petal fall. It's a good starter. When, uh, if you apply that petal fall, you can use it with the uh, carberry. We have 6BA, can be applied petal fall to all the way to the, uh, eight, uh, 16 millimeters fruit size. Again, more efficacy here in eight, 12. The same thing with ABA. ABA, it could be used for, it's a good tool because it's uh, a good tool for the organic production because it's the only PGR available for thinning uh, in the organic production. So it's a very weak thinner actually. It is uh, dependent on the temperature. It really needs temperature to work. And then we have Epiphone that usually show better efficacy at the day 12, 18 millimeters. We know that also works at early stage, but we don't have the label for that. Carboreal as well, that could be applied anytime from petal fall to later to 18 millimeters fruit size. And then we have two new products that are coming, which is the X ACC, which is gonna be called as Exceed. And, and now be, I'm gonna be talk more about uh, the exceed in the in the, the, in the following following slides, but the commercial label of exceed will allow applications from bloom to twenty millimeters fruit size, fruit size and metamitron. I'm not sure what about about the time that will be registered, but I'm assuming it's going to be the same as that other country between eight to fourteen millimeter uh, fruit size. So you see, the only PGR class actually we don't have here listed is the uh, dibralins the GAs. And the reason, of course, they're not listed as a thinner is because of the reduction return bloom, but they do cause thinning. They do thin. And then we have the combinations of, uh, of, of, uh, all, some of some of these PGRs. I have it here some uh, uh, listed. I didn't include it, uh, 
all the, the cost products because you guys are very familiar. And uh, I just put it the, uh, the PGRs or the PGR-like compounds. So when, of course, you, you can expect them that uh, a better efficacy when they're used in combination. But be aware that this combination doesn't apply, this, these uh, combinations don't apply to overrides. And you're very familiar that, uh, about that. For instance, we don't like to use combinations of, uh, that contains NAA on Fuji or red deletion after petal fall because we know we got a pygmy issues or too much NAA, combinations with too much NAA on, on um, small uh, size varieties like for instance, Gala because we know NAA suppress fruit growth. And we don't know, we don't like to do ethanol on golden and rom because they're very sensitive. So you've got to be very careful with the, when you do combinations. So I just listed some of them uh, when I was talking to Byron about the combinations uh, most of the growers were using in, in, in Washington. And he's, he mentioned that nowadays there is nothing standard across all the industry. It's really true. It's the same thing when I was in New York. Every grower is doing something different, a different combination or a different usage. So I put some of them here that we've been seeing uh, some synergies. Like uh, I've done some work in the past when I was at Cornell trying to replace carbaryl, and we see a good synergy between 6BA and NAD. But I remember that NAD is not uh, registered for late application, but we saw some very good efficacy here. 6BA plus NAA if you want to replace the carbaryl. Don't, uh, a lot of goers, I was talk, talking to Tom Alvio as well, a lot of growers, I put it at the phone on the uh, at pedal for especially in Fuji. I like that that combo there, especially for the return boom purpose. And then as we go later, we, we don't have a lot of um, options for the later application. Usually we try to put in some oil or maybe some surfactant up there to just to give that boost on the efficacy. Uh, so, of course, uh, put surfactants here. We know that if you include surfactant in some of the products, you are going to increase efficacy. Some products, 6BA, like for instance, Maxell doesn't need the surfactant because it comes already with the inbuilt uh, surfactant package. But uh, sometimes for very hard, variety, hard to think varieties, you, you may want to do some uh, things different. So let's. Uh, Look at the model of action of the fruit thinnings. I don't have much time here, so I try to run through these slides as quickly as possible. I didn't include the, the mode of action of the cost because everybody knows what they do, that they're causing burning to the floral organs, that they're stopping germination, or some are reducing leaf photosynthesis as like lime sulfur. So let's start with the, the, the cytokinase, the 6BA. So how does 6BA work then? 6BA magnifies the... Um, I would say the already existing nutritional stress. Remember I showed how the natural thinning occurs. Why? Be why the 6 base magnified? Because it stimulates shoot growth and bud break. Remember when I was talking about the natural <coughs> process of uh, uh, natural process of fruit thinning when the shoots compete with fruit compete with fruit for carbohydrate. So what 6BA is doing is increasing the competition stress between these two organs. So as vegetative growth is a strong sink, of course, the weak fruit is gonna fall. It's not gonna have enough uh, carbohydrates, gonna perceive there is not enough carbohydrate and it's gonna fall. Then there is another thing here because the seed is gonna perceive there is no carbohydrate in it and it will abort. So we know the seeds are our source of auxin. So if the seeds abort, the oxygen levels will be reduced and then the ethylene levels will increase and it, uh, causing for fruit abscission. So the ethylene there that's produced by, by the 6BA application due to the seed abortion will cause that um, uh, fruit abscission, will cause it the formation of the, the, the abscission zone. The other benefit of 6BA when applied, especially when applied during arm conditions is the cell division. We know the, cyto the cytokines are responsible for, uh, for cell division in fruit. So it does have that, doesn't cause, uh, does not just cause thinning by, um, uh, the other benefit is when applied, it, it's 
it increased size beyond uh, beyond thinning. So six bay doesn't cause any stress like the other products you see because it just uh, it just works with the imbalance of the in the carbohydrate complication between fruit and shoots. And then we have the auxins, and auxins a little bit I would call like it's a it's a, it's a thinner that causes stress. It it's a PGR just as a 6PA. It represses leaf photosynthesis because of uh, by affecting chloroplast functional function. Uh, we know that in the is in the chloroplast that where photosynthesis takes place. So if you damage the chloroplast, you're going to be damaged, causing damage to photosynthesis. Is you're not going to have enough carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. So again, the weakest fruit is going to fall. You're going to have a nutritional stress not just nutritional, but also uh, the entire tree is gonna be stressed. Another thing that NA is causing, we know that at that time of the year, NA is producing a lot of, uh, um, the tree is producing a lot of NA, it's, it's growing, there are new shoots. So there is a lot of NA already. So if you, if you spray NA, you're gonna start inducing the ethylene biosynthesis. So we're gonna increase the levels of uh, ethylene. Of course, you're gonna reduce sugar transportation, and uh, are gonna cause, uh, end up causing abscission of the weak fruit legs. Here I have the temperature, and I think I'm, I'm sure everybody knows that the 6PA works better under warmer condition. AA works a little better when it's a little cold. Uh, it works when it's colder if you compare it to, NA, to 6BA. And then you have carburyl, which is insecticide. It's until it's still unclear the mode of action. There is uh, Max Whelan, he thinks that the carbohydrate inhibits metabolite, uh, meta metabolite movement from like the sugar content from the spore leaves to the fruit. So that it always says that this, we have to have good coverage in the leaves, but there are some author, other authors that says that actually the mode of action occurs in the fruit that the, the carbohydrate is causing seed abortion and that's why it's upsizing. So there's, it's still very, it's not very clear about the mode of action of uh, carbaryl. Just a quick photo to show the tree response to NAA. We see that leaf flagging, the, uh, the wilting. So of course the leaves are gonna recover in a few days, but uh, you can see, uh, that's why we don't recommend to spray NAA to young trees or, 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 or weak trees, for instance, or too much NAA for for uh, small apple varieties, for instance, uh, gala or any other variety that has a small fruit size, because if applied at higher rates or multiplication may affect fruit growth. And then here just showing the pigmy effect from NAA when applying, doing uh, cold, uh, cold spring usually induce more pigmy fruit, but when you apply too much NAA on, or apply NAA on Fuji or on red delicious after petal fall, this is what you can see. Then we have metamitron, which is a herbicide, but with semi functionality as the PGRs. It's an inhibitor of the photosynthesis. So if you stop photosynthesis again, everything that that inhibit photosynthesis is going to cause a stress. Basic. It, 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 it caused in by stressing the trees. It affects the carbohydrate availability to the entire trees, not just to the fruit. And then that photosynthesis, that photo, uh, photosynthesis density lasts for about five to 10 days. It's greatly dependent on the weather conditions. We test a lot of what, while I was on the East Coast, it, it can cause over thin, it can cause under thin. So it really works really good when you have, when you use the carbohydrate model for us in that case. We have the seeds cast, the ABA, which inhibits leaf photosynthesis by decreasing stomata conductance and reduces CO2 supply. So what does it just shuts down um, the stomata and reduce transpiration. If you don't have CO2 supply, we know that we need CO2 for the photos, uh, for photosynthesis to produce carbohydrates. If you don't have it, you're gonna, not gonna have enough carbohydrate for the fruits that are growing. So they're gonna start falling off. And also abscess gases upregulate expression of the abscess uh, genes. It doesn't cause stress to the tree as much as does uh, NAA or metamitron or ethephone, for instance. Here, ethephone is another PGR, 
Once you apply, you to click the grade, uh, the grades, and releases ethylene once entire, uh, entering the plant cytoplasm. So it's really uh, temperature dependent, and uh, there's still uh, once you increase the levels of ethylene, you're going to start promoting the activation of the fruit decision zone. That's when uh, the fruit is going to start dropping off. So it's a stress uh, inducer. So this is a new product that's coming from Valent Biosciences. Valent USA is going to be selling this product probably in uh, next year. We're going to have for this year, but EPA has been having some uh, delays due to the COVID. So it, it might be here this year, but not for this season. So we're hoping that you guys are going to have next year. It's going to be uh, the first ever commercially available chemical thinner for stone fruit. And then for the apple, uh, apple uh, for the apple growers, it uh, it goes, uh, it's gonna be another, a new tool for the late thinning window. It, uh, I showed the first graph that I had that it can be applied anytime from bloom to 25 millimeters fruit size. But the work that we've been doing in the US is just between eight to 15 millimeters fruit size. That's where we see most of the efficacy. I'll show in the slide in a bit. But I get very excited because in Europe and Australia, grow, uh, we have done some trials and good, it shows good efficacy at bloom and petal fall as well. Last, during the 10, 12 millimeters fruit size, it, although it has efficacy, and then a lot of efficacy at the late thinning wind. They can drop fruit up to 25, but usually we spray at 18 millimeters fruit size. So Exceed contains active ingredient, one aminocyclopropane, one carboxy carboxylic acid. It's a long name. I love the ACC name. It's a naturally occurring non-protein amino acid. It's the precursor to ethylene in plants. It's different than ethephone. When you put ethephone, the, the ethephone is going to degrade and release ethylene. In this case, you apply ACC, and ACC is quickly converts to ethylene using the plant's natural biochemic pathways. You apply ACC, ACC, <coughs> it activates the enzyme ACC oxidase, and then it's going to release ethylene after that. So it doesn't leave any residue at harvest. Actually, we're having have we're having really hard time to, to uh, do the residue studies because there is no residues uh, left after some time after application. Uh, it's less aggressive than ethophone. This is just an example. This is the, the, the uh, ethylene evolution. So these are cotton, cotton plants. We sprayed away ACC and ethophone and we have our untreated here. So we spray, and then we left in 20, under 25 Celsius at 35. 25 is about, the, I think it's 75, something like that. 35 is like 90 Fahrenheit Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit. When you see the peak of ethylene here, this is my untreated, uh, uh, <coughs> my control. We didn't spray nothing, no ethylene, no ethylene from here. When you had our ethophone here, you can see that ethylene generated from ethophone is strongly dependent than temper, uh, than, uh, from the temperature. We had a very high peak here. When you look at ACC, uh, the ethylene from ACC is moderate at high, te at high temperatures. It's, I am super excited about this product here. Uh, just, just some data from Cornell, where we showed, uh, we test at 10, 80 millimeters. This is fruit set on Gala. You can see that nice response at the late stage. Uh, fruit weight, of course, is going to be dependent on the crop load, but it really thinks uh, at, the, at, the, at those late stage now. Again, at the early stage, we're doing trials now. I know Valent USA is doing trials, petal fall and bloom. So it, this is super exciting. This is just a quick look at the rates and time that uh, I'll leave here. Probably you guys are going to be uh, accessing this present this talk, and uh, you're going to be able to, to take a look at the at the, the timing and rates. So I just want to remind people that the thinning response. There is no recipe for thinning. We can I can just I don't like to talk about rates because every region, every block, every country, every grower is different. Everyone use a different rate. They're so familiar. You guys know what you're doing out there. So there is a lot of factors that uh, I think Byron has given several talks about talking about all these factors that can affect the response to thinning. So also, also always be aware when you're doing thinning, try to look at the historic of the block and try to look at all these factors before actually 
doing the thinning. So this is what I have. I hope you guys understood me and I hope I brought some inf good information and I'll be happy to take questions from here.